Purely is one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, so today I'm going to teach you how to beat it. What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, and welcome back to our competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Purely was one of the most hyped decks upon its release back in Amazing Defenders, and has done a very good job of living up to that hype. So if you're looking to play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! and you don't know how to beat Purely, you're going to have a really hard time. In this video, I'll show you the best cards to play against Purely, when to use those cards, the choke points and weaknesses of the deck, and what decks are best suited to beat Purely. So if you're excited for this video and for the How to Beat series, then make sure to smash the like button. If this video hits 75 likes, I'll know you want to see more guides on how to beat other competitive meta decks. Also, if you guys enjoy deck profiles, combo guides, meta discussions, and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! videos in general, you're going to love this channel. So make sure to subscribe and help us reach our end of year goal of 3,000 subscribers. Now with all that being said, here is the ultimate guide on how to beat Purely in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's jump into it. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is what does the Purely deck want to do? But before we do that, this is what a Purely deck looks like. The deck's engine is pretty straightforward. There are three Purelys and three Pure Lilies as the main deck monsters of the archetype and they're needed to play the deck. Onto the Purely memories, there are four quick play spells and they're a huge portion of the deck. The deck will always want to max out on these cards, so you play three copies of Pretty Memory, three Sleepy Memory, three Happy Memory, and the one limited copy of Delicious Memory. The other Purely cards include the Trap card Purely Yeep so they can rank up on their opponent's turn, and then in my opinion, the reason why the deck is so good, Stray Purely Street, the Field Spell, and My Friend Purely, the Continuous Spell. If you're counting, the engine is only 23 cards, meaning there's a ton of space for non-engine and consistency pieces in the deck as well. The extra deck is basically just a toolbox of different Purely monsters with a few tech choices as well. You'll always see 2x Purely Noir since it's your main win condition, and usually you'll see two at Purely Beauty since it's a negate. There will also always be at least one Noir, Plump, and Happiness. On top of that, a Zeus package is great in Purely. And the new tech is Condemn the Dark Lord, which during your end phase will allow you to gain 500 life points for each fairy monster, so it helps you win in time. The side deck can be adjusted for whatever the meta is in your area, but I've seen a ton of Dimension Shifter, Summon Limit, and Cosmic Cyclone being played in Purely. Now what's the deck's game plan? What they want to do more than anything else is establish a copy of Experly Noir with a ton of materials under it, because if it has five or more materials, it's unaffected by your activated effects, which is absolutely insane. On top of that, they want to add in a My Friend Purely and a Stray Purely Street to allow you for more follow-up in case the Experly Noir is outed somehow. They can do this very easily because one Purely card gets you to another, and another, and another, and that makes it so easy to get access to Experly Noir with multiple cards for interruption. Now what does the Purely end board look like? Well, it's not that assuming of an end board, but it is still very threatening nonetheless. It's usually going to be one of these two end boards, the first of which being a smaller Purely Xyz monster with Purely Sleepy Memory attached to it so you can draw a card during your opponent's standby phase, with Purely Yeep sets so you can actually activate that and then rank up during the standby phase, triggering the Sleepy Memory again and allowing you to have a 5 material noir with multiple draws off that just in the standby phase alone. Or the Experly Noir will already be establishing you have multiple cards in your hands for interruption. It's also possible that in both of these end boards, at least one of My Friend Purely or Stray Purely Street will already be active. Let's quickly talk about the Purely cards and what they do. If you already know what they do and you want to skip this section, you can go to the timestamp right over here. Starting with the main deck monsters Purely and Pure Lily. Purely on summon allows you to excavate the top three cards of your deck and add one excavated Purely spell or trap to your hand. During your main phase, you can reveal a purely quick play spell from your hand and special summon an Xyz monster that names that revealed quick play and attach the quick play and the purely to it as material. Pure Lily on summon allows you to add any non-quick play purely spell or trap from deck to hand. During your main phase, you can target a purely quick play in your graveyard and summon one Xyz that names the revealed quick play and attach the quick play and the pure Lily to it as material. There are four purely memories and they all have the following effect, where you can discard one card and special summon a level one purely from your deck. To do this, you have to be able to activate the card's main effect. Delicious Memory forces you to choose a monster and it can't be destroyed by battle until the end of the next turn. Pretty Memory makes each player gain a thousand life points. Sleepy makes it so the next battle or effect damage you take this turn becomes zero. Happy lets you choose any card in the field and until the end of the next turn, the next time it would be destroyed by card effect, it's not. So basically, Sleepy and Pretty are the only ones that can be activated while there are no other cards on the field. The Purely Quick Plays have a second effect that they can give to the Purely Xyz monsters that they're attached to. Delicious gives the Xyz monster 300 attack and defense for each attached material. Pretty allows the Xyz monster to once per turn send a card you control to the graveyard and target an opponent card as cost and attach it to the Xyz monster as material. Sleepy is arguably the best one. During your opponent's standby phase, you get to simply draw a card, and this stacks with other copies of Sleepy Memory. Happy allows the monster it's attached to to attack a number of times up to the Happy Memories attached to it, plus one. Onto the Xyz. The rank twos all have the following effect, where up to three times per turn when a purely quick play is activated, you can attach it to this card as material, then you can apply another effect. Beauty allows you to change the battle position of an opponent's monster without targeting. Happiness returns one spell or trap your opponent controls to the hand without targeting. Noir will set one purely trap directly from the deck. Plump will non-targeting banish one monster on the field until the end phase. They also have another effect that gains an additional bonus if they have their associated memory attached to it. 
For beauty, once per turn, it can target an effect monster your opponent controls as cost and negates effects until the end of the turn. If it's attached with pretty memory, it becomes a quick effect. For happiness, at the end of the damage step, if this card battled, you can add a purely card from your deck to your hand. And if it's attached with happy memory, you can have the attack of a face-up monster on the field without targeting. For noir, you can discard a card and target one card your opponent controls as cost and return it to the hand. If it's attached with sleepy memory, you can target two cards instead of one. Plump lets you target two spell or traps in the graveyard as cost and attach them to plump as material. If it's attached with Delicious Memory, this becomes a quick effect. This makes Plump the easiest way to get to a 5 plus material Experly Noir. The rank 7s are Experly Noir and Experly Happiness. Both can be summoned over a rank 2 that has 5 or more material. If they have a level 1 purely attached to it, they also get a bonus effect. Both Happiness and Noir have two effects. One normal one that gets the bonus we just talked about, and one if they have 5 or more materials attached. Happiness's normal effect is that during your main phase, you can detach a material, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end phase. If there's a level 1 purely as material, your opponent can't respond to this effect. Noir's normal effect is that it can detach two materials, target one card your opponent controls or in their graveyard as cost, and put it on the bottom of their deck. If it has a level 1 purely as material, this becomes a quick effect. When happiness has 5 or more materials attached to it, it gains the effect that when an attack is declared involving this card, you can inflict 1500 life points to your opponents. Noir's effect when it has 5 or more materials means that it's unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. Now what about the other purely cards? My Friend Purely is a continuous spell that lets you pay 500 life points to reveal any 3 purely cards and your opponent randomly adds 1 to your hand. Also, if a face up purely exceeds leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can add up to 3 purely quick plays with different names from your graveyard to your hand. Stray Purely Street is the field spell. It stops your opponent from targeting purely cards that turn their special summoned. Also, if a face up purely exceeds leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can special summon 1 level 1 purely from your deck or graveyard. Its last effect is that during the end phase, you can target a purely exceeds and attach one purely quick play to it as material from your deck or graveyard. Finally, there's the trap, purely yeep. This lets you rank up into your bigger purely monsters. You have to target a purely exceeds monster you control and use it as material, and the summon monster goes back to the extra deck during the end of the turn. Also, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target up to three purely monsters in your graveyard and shuffle them into the deck. So now that you know what the deck looks like, what its game plan is, and what the cards actually do, let's start talking about individual cards and how they interact with the deck. Starting off with hand traps, and these are the hand traps we're going to be talking about today. Ash Blossom can stop anything in the strategy since the whole thing searches. The problem is because of that, knowing which card to Ash can be pretty challenging. Personally, I would Ash the effect of My Friend Purely, which can get them to literally any Purely card in their deck. There are arguments to Ashing the Pure Lily or even a Quick Play, but unless they have an awkward hand, it usually won't be as impactful as hitting the My Friend Purely. Droll and Lockbird is really not that effective when playing against a good Purely player because they can do so much searching and drawing in the draw or standby phase. So unless they open with like My Friend Purely to add Pure Lily or start their turn off by specialing Cashier Fenrir and using its effect, and you droll them then, it really won't be that good. I would side it out games 2 and 3. Imperm and Veiler can be good in the right situation. If they don't have the field spell, these cards can be really strong. Veiler to negate Pure Lily is huge, but honestly, one of my favorite applications for these cards is going to be imperming the small Purely Exceeds monster in your draw phase before they can draw cards off Sleepy Memory in the standby phase. Just remember that Veiler is so much worse than Imperm in this matchup for a few reasons. The first of which is the field spell because it protects from targeting the turn the Purely monster is special summoned. The second is going to be because it can only be used on your opponent's turn. And the third is going to be because they can actually activate the effects of Triple Tactics Talent and thrust. Nibiru against Purely is pretty bad. Some turns they can end up summoning more than 5 times, but it's pretty rare, so I'd side it out games 2 and 3. As for Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, the deck almost never uses Link Monsters. They're mostly a toolbox, so just don't play it. Skullmeister really only has one card it has to worry about, and that's going to be Purely Yeep's Graveyard Effect. So honestly, just don't bother. Dimension Shifter can be very annoying for this deck if you manage to get the quick plays out of the graveyard, since they can be hard to recycle and attach to the Purely Xyz while they're banished. There are two problems with this though. The Purely player can just chain a quick play by discarding another memory to be able to use the effect of Lily. And second, most Purely decks are now siding copies of Dimension Shifter. D Shifter can be good, but it's not as good as we'd like. Bistrals can be good since they can hit the main deck monsters and a few of the extra deck monsters as well. They are pretty low impact since they can just summon more Purely monsters directly from their deck. DD Crow can get rid of annoying memories that Bistuals can't, which is nice, but there are better options for cards to play. If this is all you have, it can help, especially against Lily's effect to rank up because it has to target the card in the graveyard and attach it as material. Ghost Bell isn't terrible since a lot of the deck moves cards from the graveyard, so Bell can have utility, but its impact is really low. If they have very few resources left and you hit them with Bell, then it can be great, but there are usually going to be better options. As for Ghost Ogre, I love it against Purely. It can hit My Friend Purely and Stray Purely Street so they get destroyed and don't resolve, and they can hit the Purely monsters in the standby phase so they can't rank up. Quick shout out though to Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. If you can get rid of the Noir then you're gonna be in a great position, but so few decks can use it well and honestly it's not that good of a card anymore. So I'm sure you can tell by my explanations that hand traps are not going to be as effective against Purely as other cards would be. 
In reality, board breakers have a much better time against the deck. Speaking of board breakers, these are the ones we're going to be covering in today's video. Starting off with Evenly Matched. In a situation where you're facing down an Expertly Noir and both the field and continuous spells, it can be very nice. Most of the time, they're going to be keeping the Noir, which shuts off a lot of the ability for the deck to recycle cards. But as is almost always the case with Evenly Matched, you have to pair with another card to get the most amount of value out of it. Evenly also does absolutely nothing for you if their board is just Expertly Noir, so keep that in mind. Dark Ruler No More sucks against Purely, since most of the time they're going to have a Noir which will have enough materials to be immune to it anyways. If they end up on a board with beauty for negates, then yes, it can be good, but most of the time, it's not. Kaijus get rid of Noir, so right away that means they're awesome in this matchup. They do trigger Friend and Street, so it can allow them to beat you on the crackback, but if they only have those cards in the field and the Kaiju and nothing else, you might be able to actually OTK them before they get the chance to fire back at you. Lava Golem will be dead most of the time, since Purely really only needs one monster on the field, so I'd recommend playing Kaijus instead. Sphere Mode is even more dead than Lava Golem. There's a chance they end up with two monsters, but it's almost never going to be the case that they have three monsters. Change of Hearts does nothing against Noir, so it's a useless card in this matchup. Just don't play it, there are better options. So Talents to take is basically out of the question, but it's actually not a terrible card going first, since Purely plays a ton of hand traps, and you can then rip out the most valuable card from their hand to stop them from getting to Noir in the first place. Tashira Fenrir is a really bad card going second in this deck, but it's actually really good going first, since you can just banish the main deck monster before they can actually rank up. As for board breakers like Regeki, Dark Hole, Lightning Storm, and Harvey's Feather Duster, these are interesting because Regeki and Dark Hole are both awful against this deck, but Lightning Storm and Feather Duster are both quite good because they can get rid of the field and continuous spell cards. Cosmic Cyclone is another interesting card. It's better going first than it is second because you can hit their field or continuous spells to stop them from resolving. There are definitely some cards that are really good in this matchup that I just haven't talked about yet, but don't worry, I'm getting to that shortly. To do that, let's talk about cards that are good going first and cards that are good going second, starting off with cards that are good going first. Deck Lockdown prevents either player from adding cards from their deck to their hand and from special summoning from the deck directly. So not only does it stop the special summon effects from the quick play spells, but it also stops the purely monster effects that add cards from deck to hand. Dimensional Barrier Calling Xyz is amazing against the deck. It means they can't set up their plays and they can't even use purely Yeep since there won't be an Xyz on the field from the target and rank up. Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse are also pretty good for a few reasons. The first is that you can change the purely Yeep because the target will no longer be there to rank up. You can also use it on the purely main deck monsters before they get the chance to use their effect to Xyz summon. And these cards are of course pretty good going second as well. As for going second cards, Xyz Encore is arguably the best card against this strategy. It can be used in the draw phase so they don't get any draws in the standby phase, and they can respond with a trap card so that's a dead card on the field as well. Herald of the Abyss is also quite good. If you declare Dark Fairy, it forces your opponent to send a Dark Fairy to the graveyard, notably Expelli Noir. The problem is, if they have a set quick play spell, they can chain it and summon Pure Lily from the deck and send that to the graveyard instead of Noir. It can be good but not always good, but one of its biggest advantages is that it's searchable off Triple Tactics Thrust, which is something that can't be said about Xyz Encore and Kaijus. And of course, Kaijus going second are fantastic, but keep in mind they do trigger friend and streets. Moving on to choke points and weaknesses of the deck. One of the biggest ones is going to be that it's a very high investment combo to get to Expertly Noir. If you manage to get rid of it before triggering street or friend, it's going to be very hard for them to come back. Pure Lily can also be a really interesting choke point of the deck. If they just normal summon Pure Lily and they don't have much else going for them, a single Ash or Valor or Imperm can just shut the deck down completely on this turn. Purely Yeep can also be an interesting card. Most of the time it's being played at one copy, so if you can stop it from resolving without effect, it can be very good to allow you to just be able to OTK before they get a Noir on board. Now let's talk about decks with good matchups, and I'll be honest, in this specific meta, there aren't too many decks that just shut down what Purely wants to do. It's mostly going to be in non-engine pieces that do that. But I wanted to focus on decks that had in-engine ways of getting rid of Experly Noir pretty easily. So the first deck we're going to talk about is going to be Branded, specifically because of Mirror Jade. The reason why is if Mirror Jade leaves the field by your opponent's card, it activates the effect so that in the end phase, it destroys all monsters your opponent controls. So the fact that this second effect, this portion of the effect is not an actual activated effect, it will actually destroy the Expertly Noir, which is incredible. Fluanderies is also solid because Unexplored wins tributes and it's part of the effect of the card. It's not an activated effect right away, so you can get rid of the Expertly Noir by tributing over it. It will, however, trigger the effects of Street and Friends, so keep that in mind. These decks can still struggle against Purely, but they're better off than other decks in the format because of the way they have in-engine outs to Experly Noir. A deck that I think has a decent matchup, an average matchup against Purely is going to be Dragon Link, and the reason why is most of the time Purely will have one, maybe two interruptions on your turn other than hand traps, and if you can just build a pretty nasty board through one or two interruptions with Dragon Link, Purely has a hard time dealing with Boral and Dragon, so that card just alone can be a very massive problem for a Purely player. Moving on to decks with a bad matchup against Purely. Purely is really good against a deck like Manadium. The fact that this deck has no in-archetype way to get rid of Purely Noir really, really hurts. On top of that, they rely heavily on their side deck cards, and for that reason, if Purely ends up going first against this deck, it's very likely going to be an easy game for them. Of course, there are other decks that struggle against Purely, but I did want to highlight Manadium since it is one of the better decks of the format today. And there you have it. You now know how to be Purely in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, let me know in the comments, what deck are you guys playing this format, as well as how are you planning to beat Purely with that deck? 
And of course, let me know down in the comments which deck you want a How to Beat Guide for next. If you made it this far in the video, you must have enjoyed it even just a little bit. So make sure to smash the like button. If this video hits 75 likes, I'll bring you the next guide on how to beat a competitive meta deck right away. Speaking of meta decks, if you want a guide to every single playable meta deck and how they interact with the other best decks of the format, make sure to check out this video right over here. And finally, subscribe to the channel for more amazing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! videos just like this one. And of course, to help us reach our end of year goal of 3,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time.